premium compact car. If that concept means anything to you, then it's the car we look at here, Audi's A3 Sportback, that might well come to mind. True to the brand's Vorsprung Duke technique philosophy, this model once again aims to set fresh standards, incorporating a completely digitalized interior and cutting edge infotainment, plus more unique light signatures, powerful engines, and a suite of innovative assistance systems enveloped in a completely redesigned yet immediately recognizable body. The result is a car that should show you just how far things have recently progressed in this segment. The Audi A3, it's a posh hatchback, isn't it? Well, yes, but it's also much more than that. It was a car that really established the premium compact class way back in 1996. Over 5 million sales on this Mark IV model aims to redefine this segment once again, primarily with this sportback hatch body style. A quarter of a century ago, when we first saw the A3 model line in its original Type 8L form, uh, the idea of being able to move a car up market in class and appeal without increasing its size was rather new and different. Uh, Cynics dismissed it as a way of dressing up ordinary family hatches and charging a lot more for them, but customers love the idea. And uh, by the time that the second generation Type 8P Series A3 arrived in 2003, BMW and Mercedes rivals had also arrived to swell the market. Uh, initially, those two brands really struggled to produce products which are uh, good enough to overtake Audi, and the result was that nearly a quarter of a million Mark II A3s were pounding the global roads by the time the third generation Type 8 V model arrived in the autumn of 2012. It sold for nearly eight years uh, with a useful update in 2016 until this more cutting edge Type 8Y Mark IV model arrived in early 2020. All of these designs have been based on shared VW Group engineering and shared parentage can be a blessing and it can be a curse. Certainly it is an enormous advantage that this car is founded almost entirely on what is generally recognised as the market's most thoroughly engineered and best quality volume brand family hatch, the 8th generation Volkswagen Golf. But the downside from Audi's point of view is that the same engineering, complete with the evolved MQB platform, is also used by the latest versions of Seat's Leon and Skoda's Octavia, which predictably are thousands of pounds cheaper. So why pay the extra for Ingolstadt's idea of what a cutting edge compact family hat should be? Well, there are plenty of reasons why you might. Premium brand interpretations of any product don't tend to deliver anything that's uh, fundamentally different from the more affordable versions of the same thing. Uh, all they do is package it up uh, in a rather more appealing way. And that's always been the secret of this model line success. And it's the reason why over uh, 600,000 A3s are pounding our country's roads. Most of them feature this five-door hatch body style, which has been known to A3 buyers as a sport back ever since 2004. It no longer sells alongside a three-door hatch variant, and that's a disappointment because uh, that means we won't get another A3 Cabriolet. But there is a sharp-suited saloon version if you want an alternative. And, of course, there are the usual hot hatch derivatives too. Whatever your choice of A3 body shape, you can expect it all embellished with the plushest, the best connected and the highest quality cabin in the segment. Plus, across the range, there's a full portfolio of cutting edge engine tech, including both mild hybrid and plug-in powertrain options. Will it all be enough, though, for potential buyers in this segment to take a fresh look at what this car has to offer? Let's find out. Everything about this car is designed to deliver on the concept of a Volkswagen Golf with just a touch more polish and the driving experience that it offers is no exception. 
If you're an A3 regular or a graduate from a Golf, you'll find that this Audi now has even more of the mature drive dynamics that you'll be looking for, helped by a fully digital at-the-wheel experience and the optional embellishment of hybrid power and self-driving tech. And we'll get to that in a few moments and talk you through the rejuvenated engine range on offer. There's a lot that'll be familiar, of course, for Audi folk in the drive demeanor here. As with the previous model, progress can be effortless thanks to a combination of stability, poise and control that makes journey times shrink rapidly. Differences with this Mark IV design initially seem quite subtle. The main one that owners of the previous car will probably recognize being the slightly vague steering response that we criticized in the third generation A3. Uh, that's been replaced here by a helm that, even in its uh, standard electromechanical form, immediately feels more precise and direct and it allows you to properly enjoy turning that now seems a bit more crisp and immediate. Uh, there is a reason for that, or rather, to an 11 millimeter increase in front and rear track width, which sees the car a bit more planted on the road through the turns. And also the introduction of a modular dynamic handling control system, which based on steering movements, uh, predictively coordinates uh, the interplay between all the car's dynamic systems, uh, like a conductor with an orchestra, so that the car can always be one step ahead of the drive inputs that you want to make. Coordination with the ESC stability setup is a key element of this, which as before includes Audi's wheel selective torque control system, which lightly breaks the inside front wheel through tight bends, sharpening turning, and ensuring that all the power gets onto the tarmac. Push on like this and you're going to want to have selected the most focused dynamic setting in the Audi Drive Select driving mode system that you get on all but the entry trim models, uh, that being the only one of the modes that we found makes much of a difference. It weights up the steering really quite a lot. There is also an eco setting and a comfort one, although that only significantly changes things if you've paid extra for the adaptive damp control system, which we think you might well want on an S-trim model like this one, which otherwise gets a rather firm passive suspension setup, which which over poorer surfaces can sometimes feel rather over stiff. Uh, if you can't decide between uh, your drive select settings, then there's an auto option which coordinates everything for you. And there's also an individual menu via which you can make all your own changes to the drive system and the steering. If you've opted for the S-Tronic 7-speed auto, the drive select settings can alter change times on that too. Engine choice in a car like this is crucial, of course, and even more so in this case, because uh, models with the base petrol and diesel engines come with a very different suspension setup to the mid-range petrol and diesel variants. Opt for the two least powerful A3s, the 30 TFSI petrol derivative, which has 110 PS, and a three-cylinder, one-liter turbo engine, or the 30 TDI diesel, which now uses the VW Group's latest 116 PS, four-cylinder, two-liter unit, and this Audi will come with the unsophisticated torsion beam suspension system, which is cheaper for the Engelstadt factory to build, but which can get unsettled over poorer surfaces. Uh, both those uh, base power plants offer similar performance, rest to 62 in just over 10 seconds, en route to a top speed of just under 130 miles an hour, but the diesel has 50% more pulling power through the gears, which might make it more suitable for a longer commute if you don't care about satisfying friends of the earth. A great number of A3 customers though opt for the mid-range 1.5 litre four-cylinder petrol unit of the 35 TFSI variant which we're trying here, which like every other power plant available in the range, complements drive dynamics aided by a much more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension setup that better cruises over tarmac tears and which is a better partner for more enthusiastic driving. Here you've got 150 PS which, are helped by the relatively light curve weight of under 1.3 tonnes gives this Audi a decent bit of fizz. The 62 miles an hour time improves to 8.4 seconds uh, en route to 139 miles an hour. Here we're trying with a completely new, more efficient six-speed manual gearbox, which Audi has now installed in this car, which has a shorter first gear for quicker start-off and a longer top ratio for easier cruising. 
Audi couldn't explain to us why this stick shift isn't compatible with their current mild hybrid engine technology orientated here only at the two lower order petrol models. Not that it matters much because most A3 customers want the seven speed auto that we just mentioned. Specify that S-Tronic auto transmission with either a 30 TFSI or this 35 TFSI variant and the engine comes with an integrated 48 volt BAS belt alternator starter generator which powers a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a 48 volt compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested via a KERS kinetic energy recovery system. It's easy to get uh, terminologies mixed up here though like the mild hybrid tech the Ford uses, this doesn't create in this A3 any kind of proper full hybrid, the kind of thing that might be capable of providing Prius-like periods of electric-only driving. There's nothing like that here. Audi's overall objective instead was uh, to make the engines more efficient via smoother transitions between driving, cruising and resting. That additional electricity might be used either to boost the engine while accelerating or to restart it when the stop-start system kicks in at low speeds. All this surplus energy might be directed to help power ancillary functions instead. As long as you limit your expectations to the things that the mild hybrid tech here has actually been developed to deliver, rather than expecting eye-catching Prius-style efficiency figures, you should be pretty satisfied with the way that all this works in an S-Tronic equipped uh, A330 TFSI or 35 TFSI model in practice. Thanks to the electrical assistance, refinement is even better and enough battery boot is generated for the petrol engine to be rarely bothered for acceleration duties around town. Audi also claims that the MHEV system generates a fraction more accelerative boost too, although that isn't reflected by the performance figures which exactly replicate those of the manual models. But, as mentioned above, the mild hybrid lower order petrol models of this car aren't proper hybrids. If you want an A3 that is, then you'll need the PHEV model, almost certainly the 40 TFSI E variant. This plug-in hybrid borrows its drivetrain from a PHEV segment Pioneer, uh, Volkswagen's Golf GTE, which means a 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine is mated to a six-speed DSG auto gearbox. The 85 kilowatt electric motor that this package works with is mated to a 13 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that, when it's fully charged, can offer a WLTP rated driving range, all electric that is, of up to 41 miles, and a rather academic all-electric top speed of up to 80 miles an hour. Rely primarily on petrol power and the 62 miles an hour sprint occupies just 7.6 seconds en route to 141 miles an hour. If you want to go faster in an A3 PHEV, you can talk to your Audi Center about an alternative 45 TFSIE S-Line competition variant with a combined system output of 245 PS. That's the same as a Golf GTI. The 40 TFSI E plug-in variant is primarily targeted at A3 folk who in previous times would have opted for an A3 with the conventional 150 PS 2 litre TDI diesel. You can still have that, a 40 TDI variant which now only comes with the 7-speed S-Tronic auto transmission and like the lesser TDI uses the latest more efficient twin dosing version of the VW Group's Evo 2 litre diesel power plant which we'll brief you on more fully in our cost of ownership section. But that 40 TFSI E plug-in model is probably a better bet, which is probably the kind of car that might appeal to someone seeking a slightly more tax-efficient alternative to the primary hot hatch representative in the lineup, the S3, although it's likely that S3 loyalists will accept no substitute. From an engineering point of view, not too much has changed with that shopping rocket derivative. Exactly the same EA2888 series 2 litre turbo TFSI petrol unit features here as was fitted to the previous generation S3 with exactly the same 310 PS output and develops much the same kind of performance, uh, 62 to 4.8 seconds if you're quick with the steering wheel paddle shifters for the S-Tronic Auto gearbox that that variant now has to have en route to a top speed limited to 155 miles an hour. Uh, this model's standard Quattro four-wheel drive system 
system has been lightly revised for quick reactions, which also now apply to the optional adaptive damping system, now hydraulically activated and better able to coordinate with that new modular dynamic handling control system that we referenced earlier. This S3 gets as standard the progressive steering system, which is available as an option on lesser variants. Uh, we have been trying it here uh, with the variable rack, which makes the steering more direct the more you turn the wheel and uh, which facilitates sharper corner turning. If you want even more performance than the S3 can offer, uh, think over 400 PS, you'll need to put your name down for the latest generation version of Audi Sport's uberquick RS3 Super Hatch. Whatever flavour of A3 Sportback you happen to prefer, it'll come with a fresh generation of drive assist technology which has been ushered in by this fourth generation model. So let's finish this section uh, by briefing you on that. Uh, what's important to understand here is the switch from passive to active technology. Uh, now previously, the optional ACC adaptive cruise control system uh, that merely braked and accelerated the car based around a preset speed. Now now it uses the car's front camera system, GPS data and a host of sensors to drive the car predictively. So uh, when ACC is set, the car knows in advance about bends, roundabouts and upcoming traffic flow. Plus this Audi will adapt itself to speed limits as you enter them. Adaptive cruise control is also an integral part of this car's clever new adaptive cruise assist system which comes as part of the optional driver assistance pack. Now, this technology is now fitted as standard to most Golfs uh, but unfortunately you have to pay extra for it on most A3s unless of course you stretch all the way up to the top uh, Vorsprung trim level. It's worth having though, uh, it enables partially assisted so-called level 2 autonomous driving. Uh, the old third generation a3 model's traffic jam assist setup had an element of this. Uh, it paired ACC technology with active lane assist, adaptive lane guidance, so that the car could effectively drive itself in traffic queues. But because uh, the tech would only work uh, up to 37 miles an hour, it was only good for urban conditions. So Audi has developed adaptive cruise assist from it, which also works with ACC and the active lane assist element of the now evolved lane deployment departure warning system, but it now can provide partially assisted driving at highway speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. That's made possible by the integration of the predictive technology that we just mentioned. And the addition here of a new capacitive steering wheel, which has to sense your hands on its rim. Otherwise, if warnings are ignored, it'll disable all the drive systems and bring the car to a gradual stop at the side of the road. This is all the kind of technology that we think a typical buyer of this Audi will really like. Trust the Ingolstadt maker to redefine just how classy and luxurious a compact family hatch can be. This fourth generation A3 Sportback takes everything that's great about its Volkswagen Golf cousin and adds an extra layer of cool sophistication. Sure, for the same money, you could consider buying a bigger car from a lesser brand, but after trying this one, Audi hopes that you won't want to. Audi talks of the way that this fourth generation A3 styling has been revolutionized and that's something that designer Imo Redeker is very enthusiastic about. Now these days the range is primarily based around this five-door sport back body shape. Uh, the only other option is a saloon and that has been given a rather more athletic stance and a slight size increase this time around. You might notice that from the side, this Type 8 Y Series model is three centimeters longer than its predecessor, but you're more likely to pick up on the fact that this uh, profile has a more purposeful feel. Things like the triangular forward facing shape of the C pillar and the more assertive panel crease lines, one on the shoulder, uh, which tapers upwards from the headlights to the rear tail lamps, uh, the other lower down, which is drawn upwards before it reaches the rear wheel arch. Also notable is the clever concave centre section that curves into the panel work and creates an interplay of light and shadow. A wheel sizes, they start at 16 inches, but they can be as large as 19 inches if you wish. We have the 18 inch five spoke Y design rims here. 
The front end has a good deal more overtaking presence thanks to sculpted angular full LED headlamps with lighting signatures that reflect the trim level chosen. Here two vertical LED lines are meant to emphasise uh, S-line sportiness. Intelligent matrix beams with 15 light emitting diodes are optional. Uh, these lamps flank a wider lower honeycomb trimmed single frame grille. These vertically stacked daytime running lights are interesting and large angular air intakes are set into a more striking bumper. At the rear, this larger, longer roof edge spoiler makes the flatter rear screen appear lower and width is also emphasised by this lower diffuser with its trapezoidal tailpipes and by these flatter LED tail lamps which now have a vertical light design which complements the tailgate shut lines. As usual, of course, uh, what is rather more important is what you can't see, the light, sophisticated MQB platform that has most to do with this Mark IV model's impressively light curb weight. This 35 TFSI variant uh, weighs in at just 1,280 kilos. Those underpinnings, which are now further evolved, are used not only for this A3, but also for its VW Group segment cousins, the Volkswagen Golf, the Seat Leon, and the Skoda Octavia. Plus, 29% of the passenger cell that sits on this platform is now made up of intensely strong, hot-formed steel. So, an evolved exterior, but what's it like inside? Well, unlocking the car can now be activated by your smartphone if you happen to have an Android device and you pay extra for the optional Audi Connect key. In the past, the cabin experience is what sold A3s. And in the future, it's what will sell this one. There's what Audi calls a new level of digital technology, but it's been incorporated here much less self-consciously than it is in a comparable Golf. As is Audi's current style, black panel tech dominates. With hidden screens, you don't notice until you fire the engine, at which point this 10.1 inch MMI central screen and this 10.25 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle display spring into life. And there is something of a cockpit feel here in the immersive style of ergonomic design uh, in the way that these air vents combine with the instrument binnacle and the manner in which the central screen and the redesigned climate controls just below it have been canted towards the driver. Uh, this lower centre console looks very different too, larger and silver framed, but a little disappointingly no longer home to a rotary controller for the screen just above. Uh, there is, though, this little round uh, sensory volume control that reacts to circular finger movements, and it's a lot easier to use than the slider volume function strip provided on a Golf. Much effort has gone into visually emphasise the width and spaciousness of his cabin, most notably with precise horizontal lines and surfaces, like this uh, striking line of vents on the passenger side with a smart curved trim strip just below, which looks classier than it actually feels. Adding to what is largely an illusion of extra interior room is the way that the seats have been positioned a little lower to give you seven millimeters more headspace. Uh, there is six millimeters more elbow room and a fractional two millimeters more shoulder room too. And you're gonna really like the quality and classy design on show here. The hexagonal contrast stitching on the dash top, the smarter gear shifter, and uh, little touches like these hockey stick shaped door handles. Let's get to those screens and start with the display you'll view through this redesigned three-spoke wheel, that for the configurable 10.25-inch virtual cockpit display. Once a pricey extra for A3 folk, but now standard across the range. Uh, the graphics of this setup have been redesigned, but it works just as it did before with two selectable layouts, and they're activated by this steering wheel view button. Uh, there is a classical view, which prioritizes a couple of prominent dials that are separated by an information screen and there's an infotainment mode which shrinks that pair of gauges to allow more central space for various data readouts, a trip computer, media or phone settings or a full width navigation setup. Now, The only slight issue we have with the virtual cockpit package 
is that you can't use the navigational part of it if you are using outside sat-nav systems through your phone, such as Waze. Otherwise, though, this setup uh, still represents a class benchmark for digital instrument clusters of this kind. Top spec A3s feature the larger 12.3 inch version of this display, and you'll find that on Audi's larger models. Uh, that Virtual Cockpit Plus setup features an extra dynamic instrument display option. Anything this screen can't tell you, and much that it can, will of course be found on the car's central infotainment screen. On this fourth generation A3, rather disappointingly, this no longer glides impressively out of the top of the dash on startup as it did on the previous model. Uh, this time around, it is more conventionally buried into the middle of the centre stack here. As we said earlier, uh, another thing to be abandoned is the MMI system's lower rotary controller, which used to make it really super easy to operate the screen without taking your eyes off the road. But there are plenty of compensations to make up for all of this, primarily based around the fact that this new MMI Navigation Plus setup, which is standard across the range, now uses Audi's latest MIB3 modular infotainment platform. This is able to provide 10 times the computing power of the old MIB2 setup, which was used in the previous generation model. The first thing you'll notice about this is a smarter front-end menu structure, which sees the most important uh, radio, media, telephone and nav functions dealt with by tile apps that you can move around with the kind of uh, drag and drop functionality that we're used to from your smartphone. And on that subject, uh, the standard Audi smartphone interface, well that includes uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, you would have to pay extra for that on a rival Mercedes model in this segment, or you would have to pay a subscription for it after the first year in a rival BMW. Possibly our favourite improvement with this new MIB3 setup, though, is the enhancement of what Audi calls natural language voice control, which works far better than it did before. You can't call it into action with a branded voice command as you can with rival systems. Uh, instead, it's necessary to press a steering wheel button, but when you do, it can now cope with most voiced requirements in a very intuitive manner indeed. It easily handles phrases like find me an Italian restaurant uh, with quick delivery of a list of local options. That's possible because of the way that the MMI system is connected to the internet with high speed access via an embedded eSIM. This means you can create uh, in the car a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can get access to things like weather and news feeds. A three-year subscription to the Ingolstadt brand's uh, Audi Connect Navigation and Infotainment Services Plus package, that's also included, and that will give you Audi online traffic information, online media streaming, online and hybrid radio, and access to highly detailed 3D city displays, as well as information on things like fuel prices and flight times. Plus, you can also access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages, and it's possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. You're perfectly positioned to view all this information by supportive chairs, which are anatomically shaped, but disappointingly, don't feature lumbar support unless you stretch all the way up to the top of the range. Uh, the fabric upholstery that's supplied in other markets are made from recycled plastic bottles, but um, Audi says that there'll be no demand for that here. Not sure what that says about the UK buyer. Uh, here, apparently, we still prioritise luxury over eco-mindedness, which is why leather upholstery is standard above entry-level trim. This certainly adds to the very upmarket ambiance that's served up here. Uh, wherever you look, though, there are uh, treats, uh, whatever you touch or feel, uh, buttons click nicely, column stalks feel good, and the low-rent plastics you'd find further down in most premium rivals, well, they're noticeable by their absence. The only real oversight is a lack of a lid for these twin cup holders in front of the gear stick. Uh, front wheel visibility is fine, but your over-the-shoulder view is slightly compromised, as is the case with a number of other cars in this segment too, so it's fortunate that rear parking sensors are standard fit. Storage space, that could be better. You don't get this useful cubby down by the driver's right knee or a lock for the glove box unless you pay extra for the optional storage pack. And the glove box, which incorporates coin holders, isn't especially big either. 
plus the door bins are slim and the open console uh, between the front seats is rather shallow although it is topped by an armrest that neatly uh, ratchets up to your preferred elbow height uh, there is a ticket clip in the uh, driver's sun visor here. Uh, there's a coin tray next to the cup holders we just mentioned. And ahead of that, at the base of the center stack, there's a stowage area that's obviously intended for your phone because USB ports are provided just above. Now on the rival Golf, you're stuck with only USB-C points, so you may well have to uh, get an unsightly adapter. Uh, here, Audi provides both USB-A and USB-C ports to suit whatever lead you happen to have. Little details like that really count. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, given that the 1.43 metre height and 2.64 metre wheelbase dimensions of this Mark IV model are unchanged over the previous generation design, we weren't expecting too much here. As with most cars in this segment, it's not particularly spacious in the back. Uh, you'd love to find the kind of sliding reclining bench that you can have in a comparable Audi Q3 SUV, but that sort of thing doesn't tend to feature on a conventional hatch. A six-footer can sit behind an equally lanky driver, but it is a fairly snug fit, and as you'd expect from this class of car, three across the back here only reworks if the people concerned are of school going age. Uh, this high central transmission tunnel certainly doesn't help in that regard either. A pair of modestly proportioned adults would enjoy reasonable comfort here though, helped by a small three millimeter increase in elbow room this time around. And what's on offer here is directly comparable to what uh, you would get in either of this model's two closest premium badge segment rivals, the BMW 1 Series and the Mercedes A-Class. There are a few signs of cost cutting. Uh, the cup holders in this central armrest reside in just this single open molding rather than gliding out of the armrest as they did before. And you only get the 12 volt socket and the seat back nets if you pay extra for that optional storage pack we mentioned. And that does seem a little bit mean. Still, the premium feel that characterizes the front of the cabin is properly preserved back here with touches like white stitched leather upholstery, uh, these smart angled door handles and the overhead LED reading lights that sit at the end of this contoured raised ceiling panel. Uh, twin central vents here and coat hooks in the grab handles also feature. Finally, let's have a look in the boot. Uh, it's 380 litres in size, as before. That's basically the same as a Golf, but it's way smaller than the 600 litre trunk of this model of Skoda Octavia Cousin. It's a versatile cargo space, thanks to the inclusion of an adjustable height boot floor, which can be repositioned at two different levels, uh, depending on the height of the load that you have to carry. Disappointingly, beneath it, uh, Audi no longer provides a proper space saver spare wheel, unless you pay extra for that that's just one of those uh, awful fiddly tire repair kits instead you have to pay extra for this 12 volt port and for the stowage net too uh, they're part of that storage pack we mentioned earlier there are these two useful compartments on either side of the load space and you do get a couple of bag hooks plus nice touches like the way that the warning triangle is uh, built into the inside of the tailgate if you need room for longer items, you better have avoided base Technic trim because it's only above that level that you get this 40-20-40 split rear backrest, uh, the centre part of which can be pushed forward between a couple of rear seated passengers uh, so you can easily carry long items like skis. Uh, push the rear bench uh, fully flat and you'll have up to 1,200 litres of room to play with. That's 20 litres less than the previous generation model and it'll fall further if you opt for one of the plug-in hybrid TFSI E variants uh, because of underfloor battery placement before you start folding down the seats, they can offer only 280 litres. After everything we've been saying in this film about this fourth generation A3 pushing up market, you won't be expecting it to undercut an equivalent Volkswagen Golf on price, yet that is exactly what has happened with this A3 Sportback, uh, to the tune of between 200 and 800 pounds, depending on the uh, mainstream engine that you happen to be looking at which in most cases will be either the 30 TFSI 1 litre 110 PS petrol variant 
or the base 30 TDI 2 litre 116 PS diesel. Perhaps though the mid-range 35 TFSI 1.5 litre 150 PS petrol derivative that most customers tend to want, which is what we've been trying here. Don't gather from that though that this Ingolstadt model is inexpensive uh, from launch and at the time of this test in autumn 2020, prices started from around £22,500, but very few A3s are actually sold with sticker prices much below 25,000. And it's easily possible to reach up towards 35,000 if you want a plush trim level or a bit of extra engine technology. On that subject, the fully electrified 40 TFSIE plug-in hybrid A3 Sportback starts at around £33,000 and even that significantly undercuts what you'll need for a mechanically identical Golf GTE. Uh, there's a bit of a theme developing here, isn't there? You really would have to wonder just how comfortable Volkswagen UK's importers are with this. I mean, they would point out correctly that an equivalent Golf is slightly better spec'd, but the extra features that you get aren't really anything that you couldn't really live without. Uh, the Sporting S3 variants are appropriately enough price positioned uh, above an equivalent Golf GTI uh, with asking figures that start at around £38,000. As mentioned elsewhere in this film, rather disappointingly, there'll be no A3 Cabriolet variant this time around because that body shape was always based on the three-door hatch body style, which is now no longer offered. You can still have an A3 Saloon variant though, and that's offered at a premium of around £570 over this five-door body style. As before, Sportback sales are primarily based around four trim levels, Base Technic, Sport, S-Line, which is what we have right here, and plush Vorsprung. Uh, the saloon range uh, does without the base Technic spec, but otherwise it's exactly the same. Whatever your choice of body style, with the Volume 30 TFSI and 35 TFSI petrol models and the base 30 TDI diesel, there's the option of finding just over £1,500 more to have dual-clutch S-Tronic 7-speed automatic transmission rather than the standard 6-speed manual. With all other engines, S-Tronic is mandatory. Now, before we get into competitor comparisons, let's try to price position this A3 Sportback for you without Audi's own range. Uh, the company is aware that many potential customers uh, will also be considering compact SUVs of the sort like its competitors, the Ingolstadt maker already offers. Uh, closest in price to this A3 is the brand's entry-level SUV, the Q2. That's based on the platform of the smaller A1 Super Mini, and it costs around about the same as this A3 in volume 35 TFSI petrol form, but you'd need around 5,000 miles more to get the slightly larger Q3 model with that same engine. The Q3, as the moniker suggests, is more comparable to an A3 Sportback. It's based on the same MQB platform. Let's assume though that you're happy with a conventional family hatch class model and you'd like to look beyond the Audi brand for alternatives here. Now we've already touched on price comparisons with one of the three VW Group family hatchback models that share almost identical engineering with this one. Uh, that's the Volkswagen Golf. Uh, this Audi looks good when it's matched against that car, but uh, of course the proposition is really very different if you're prepared to consider instead comparisons with the Wolfsburg conglomerate's uh, other two identically engineered hatch models, the Seat Leon and the Skoda Octavia. You'd expect, of course, that an equivalently engined Leon or Octavia would be cheaper than this A3, but by two and a half to three thousand pounds, well, that'll be the kind of price difference you'll be looking at if you're considering the two lower powered A3 Sportback petrol engines and comparing them to their Leon or Octavia equivalents. If you're looking at the base 115 PS 2 litre TDI diesel engine, then the premium for Audi ownership over a Leon or Octavia is more in the region of around. 1500 to 2000 pounds. It all makes you think a bit though, doesn't it? 
There's better news for Audi though when it comes to consideration of competing family hatchback models that are outside of VW Group brands. Uh, there are two really key ones in our market and neither can offer the sheer quality of an A3. A Ford Focus in volume 1 litre T, 125 PS petrol form would save you only a few hundred pounds over an equivalent A3 Sportback 30 TFSI. And the Ford really doesn't have an engine that can uh, properly compare to this Audi's volume 1.5 litre TSI petrol unit as fitted to the 35 TFSI variant that we're trying here. A base focus 1.5 litre EcoBlue diesel 120 PS model can undercut a base A3 Sportback 35 TDI 116 PS by quite a large amount, just over £2,000, but the focus will also cost you significantly more to run and it'll depreciate much faster. The other key volume brand family hatchback segment player in our market is Vauxhall's Astra. Well, um, as you might expect, that is way cheaper than an A3. Uh, think in the region of around four and a half thousand pounds for a base petrol and diesel model, but you get what you don't pay for. Uh, the Vauxhall just doesn't have the quality feel or the cabin technology of this Audi. And of course, like that Ford, it won't hold its value anything like as well. Those last comments also apply to the other significant players in the segment, Renault's Megane, uh, Citroen C4, Honda Civic, Hyundai's i30, Kia's Seed and Peugeot's 308. Yes, they would be cheaper and no, they wouldn't feel like an A3. The kind of money that you'd have to find for this Audi would get you full hybrid technology in the form of Toyota's Corolla, but again, not the same kind of quality. Now, obviously, you could save a massive amount by opting for a more budget orientated family hatch like the Fiat Tipo or the Skoda Scala, but uh, then the same comments apply, but to an even greater degree. We think the Mini Clubman or the Mazda 3 both get much closer to an A3's feel than any of the other rivals we've mentioned so far in terms of perceived quality. But if you're going to pay near Audi money for one of those, then you might conceivably take the view that you might as well have stumped up for an Audi in the first place. Or for the other two premium badge contenders in the class, the BMW 1 Series and the Mercedes A-Class. Now, for reference, uh, we'll tell you that base petrol versions of both of those cars cost around about the same as you'd pay for a comparable A3 Sportback 35 TFSI model like this one here. The advantage this Audi has though is that it can also be had with a lower order 110 PS petrol engine, the unit that features in the 30 TFSI variant, and that will give you almost as much performance as a base petrol A-Class or 1 Series, yet at the same time it would give you better economy and it would save you around £1,500 to buy up front. A base A3 diesel would save you a few hundred pounds over a base diesel A-Class and one series model two. So that's talked you through your segment alternatives. Uh, if having considered those, you conclude, as many global buyers will, that there's really nothing quite like an A3, then your mind might be made up by a bit of generosity on Audi's part when it comes to that all important standard spec. Is that what's been delivered here? Well, let's see, and let's start with the base Technic trim. Now, we were a little surprised to find uh, lacking at this level a proper 40-20-40 split rear backrest and the Audi Drive Select driving mode system, which is really integral to this car's whole driving experience. Otherwise, though, uh, even this base trim spec level seems pretty well provided for. You get 16-inch five double-arm alloy wheels, full LED headlights with separate LED daytime running lights, a rear tailgate spoiler, auto dimming headlights and auto wipers, plus an alarm and a range of camera safety features that we'll brief you on in a few minutes. Standard interior features include air conditioning, a leather trimmed three spoke multifunction steering wheel, a cruise control, a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, rear parking sensors and acoustic windscreen glass. There are also niceties you probably wouldn't expect with base trim, uh, mainly media related features, which arrive here as part of this Mark IV A3 model's fresh generation of digital technology. That includes standardization of the Audi virtual cockpit, a 10.25 inch high resolution TFT dash instrument binnacle display screen with customizable menus and information. 
And on the subject of infotainment, a big 10.1 inch center dash touchscreen is now no longer a pricey extra for A3 folk. It's now fitted across the range as part of the standard MMI Navigation Plus package. And that uses the brand's latest MIB3 modular infotainment platform. This is able to provide 10 times the computing power of the old MIB2 setup that was used in the previous generation model. That, of course, enables the MMI Navigation Plus setup to deliver an awful lot. As a starting point, you have 3D sat-nav, a six-speaker DAB audio system, Bluetooth, and the usual Audi smartphone interface, which allows use of the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto MirrorLink smartphone mirroring systems. Extra features you'll be pleasantly surprised to find at this level in the range include an available Wi-Fi hotspot along with handwriting recognition which allows you to trace commands onto the screen with your fingertip. And this entertainment system now also features one of the most intuitive voice recognition systems in the segment. Uh, so questions like where is the nearest Italian restaurant can now be recognized and they can be responded to with a display that shows matching restaurants nearby. Plus, the Ingolstadt brand also throws in a three-year subscription to its Audi Connect Navigation and Infotainment Services Plus package. Now, this permanently connects the MMI system to the internet with high-speed access via an embedded eSIM. Uh, thanks to that, you can call up highly detailed 3D city displays, use online and hybrid radio with access to thousands of global stations, and you can call up information on things like fuel prices, weather, flight times, and other online services provided by third parties. Uh, the Connect system also enables you to access uh, special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages, and it's possible to read, write, and to send text messages and emails. Plus, the included online media streaming package gives you access to millions of music tracks with artist recognition. And there is also a clever Audi online traffic information system which uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Also built into Audi Connect is the car to x services system that the brand has developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. Now that allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions or to somehow know what's around the next corner. It's not magic, of course. Uh, the setup is instead driven by a mobile phone-supported so-called vehicle swarm exchange of information system, which will see your A3 sending data on driver conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other drivers. As a result, this car can offer a whole host of clever features, including online traffic sign and hazard information, and an on-street parking search function too. Unfortunately, for the UK anyway, uh, you can't have our favourite car to X feature, that's traffic light information functionality. Although, uh, you might find that you can use that if you travel with your A3 to the various European cities where it has been activated. Now with this, when you're sitting in town at a red light, uh, the instrument cluster can then display a speed recommendation for when you move off and that will be perfectly coordinated with when the next traffic light that you come to turns green. So uh, when you're traversing a city, you won't have to be uh, constantly stopping and starting. It's a brilliant piece of technology. What else? Uh, when you can take Audi Connect connectivity with you, even when you're not in your A3, thanks to the improved My Audi app, uh, this transmits points of interest to the navigation system, it streams music, and it can transfer your calendar to the MMI infotainment screen. And the app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city, for example, and you have to park uh, a few streets away from the venue, then navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete that journey on foot. And finally, as usual with vehicle apps of this sort, uh, you can use it to get a vehicle status report and to lock or unlock the car from wherever you are. All of that comes as standard with base Technic trim, but most A3 customers opt to find the extra to move up to one of the mid-range trim levels, possibly the next one up, Sportspec. 
Now this adds the missing Audi Drive Select driving mode system and that uh, alters throttle response, steering feel and on the S-Tronic Auto models, gear shift timings based on the way that you want to drive via four settings, comfort, uh, dynamic, efficiency or if you can't decide, auto. Uh, with sport trim, you also get the more flexible 40-20-40 split rear seat back and a much classier feeling cabin thanks to twin leather upholstery, uh, climate control and a package of aluminium interior details. There is also a sport styling package for the exterior and that's complemented by aluminium window trims and larger 17 inch S parallel spoke style alloy wheels. The most popular A3 trim level though continues to be S-Line, which as we said earlier is what we've got here. Uh, that's primarily because it delivers a significantly more purposeful look and that comes courtesy of larger 18 inch five arm dynamic alloy wheels, rear privacy glass, chrome tailpipes and an S-Line styling pack which includes S-Line themed bumpers, a more overt S roof spoiler and a body coloured front spoiler lip plus a black finish for the rear diffuser, the front and rear side inlets, and for the honeycomb structured front grille. At this level of the range, uh, you'll also get all weather headlamps uh, with dynamic beam adjustment and upgraded daytime running lights. Plus there's dynamic scrolling rear indicators and sport suspension lowered by 15 millimeters. Uh, the cabin of an S-Line spec A3 meanwhile is lifted by sports front seats with a smarter upholstery package, a combination of both real and artificial mono pure 550 leather uh, featuring contrasting stitching and S backrest embossing. At this level you also get aluminium dash inlays, stitched leather armrests uh, for the front and for the rear, a black cloth headliner, stainless steel pedals, illuminated door sill plates and an LED interior lighting pack and that gives the cabin a really classy feel at night. If you like the idea of S-Line trim but you want a meaner look, you can also talk to your dealer about the availability of a black edition spec model which adds black trimming elements both inside and out. Is it worth finding the extra cash for the top Vorsprung flagship level of trim? Well, we're talking a big price jump up from, say, this S-Line spec model, but if you were thinking of heavy embellishing this car anyway, it might be one that's worth making because with a Vorsprung variant, you'll find that pretty much every significant option box would have uh, been ticked for you, including features like 19-inch, five twin spoke edge designed uh, anthracite black finished diamond cut alloy wheels and a black styling pack which finishes exterior elements like the front grille surround, uh, the window trims, the bumper inlays and the door mirror housings in that colour. Uh, plus Vorsprung customers get intelligent matrix LED headlights with headlamp washers, a uh, panoramic glass roof, a power operated gesture controlled tailgate and Audi beam Vorsprung puddle lights. Inside Vorsprung spec gets you heated and power operated front seats with lumbar support, uh, Nappa leather upholstery, carbon trim inlays, the Audi phone box wireless charging mat, an extended ambient lighting pack with five predefined color profiles and the larger 12.3 inch version of the instrument binnacle screen which is known as Audi Virtual Cockpit Plus and that has an extra dynamic instrument display option. Extra driving aids include a head-up display, a 360 degree surround view camera setup and a parking assist with Parking System Plus auto parking system. Plus at this level in the range you get all the useful semi-autonomous features that Audi includes in its driver assistance pack and we'll cover those off for you in a moment. Finally, we'll brief you on the standard equipment of the S3 Quattro Hot Hatch model, which, as you expect, has its own bespoke spec. Uh, this variant is identifiable by its 18-inch, 10-spoke star-style alloy wheels with glossy black brake calipers. Plus, there's an S3 design body styling kit, which includes unique design for the front bumper, the grill, uh, the air intake grills, the roof spoiler, and the rear diffuser, out of which peep 
dual branch oval twin chrome plated tailpipes. Inside an S3 there are heated sports seats upholstered in Nappa leather plus a flat bottomed uh, three spoke wheel for the standard progressive steering system. Now that includes a more direct rack for sharper turning and easier low speed maneuvering too. You also get the various interior stowage features of Audi's storage pack. If you're choosing an S3 and that's not enough, then this hot hatch can also be had with Vorsprung trim with all the extra features of that level that we just briefed you on. Okay, that's covered off the standard kit with each trim level. Let's move on now to the kind of extra cost options that you can specify across the range. Now, rather than paying the huge premium for the top Vorsprung level of trim that we've just been telling you about, uh, most buyers will probably opt for a rather more affordable model like this one we have here and then add in various key extras. Addis option packs are especially popular and there are two particularly important ones. The first one being the comfort and sound pack. For around £1,200 extra, that gets you four of the key Vorsprung features, heated front seats, a reversing camera, uh, that parking assist with parking system plus feature that we just mentioned, uh, and that'll help you to find parking spaces and steer you into them, and the Bang & Olufsen uh, premium sound system. The latter audio setup is particularly desirable. It puts out 680 watts via 15 speakers, four of which are located in the instrument panel and which use the reflections of the windscreen to create a 3D quality of sound. An algorithm that was developed in collaboration with the Fraunhofer Institute adds breadth and depth to the listening experience. If you've ordered S-Tronic Auto Transmission with your A3, we think you're going to want to look at the driver assistance pack that we mentioned earlier, uh, the elements of which enable a certain degree of so-called level two autonomous driving at high speeds. A uh, key part of this pack is the ACC Adaptive Cruise Control System. Now that incorporates predictive cruise control and it uses images from a windscreen camera along with uh, navigation data to adjust the car's speed ahead of bends and speed restrictions. Plus, of course, ACC can do all the usual things. Uh, it adapts your A3 speed to the vehicles ahead of you. And in the event of a tailback, it'll bring the car to a controlled stop and it'll start it off again without any driver input. Uh, the pack also includes adaptive cruise assist. That's basically a development of the previous traffic jam assist system. And that could accelerate, brake and steer and maintain distance to the vehicles ahead. But Whereas uh, that previous automatic longitudinal and lateral guided system uh, could only really be used at up to 37 miles an hour, adaptive cruise assist can almost completely control the car for you at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. That is provided you keep your hands on the new capacitive steering wheel. Although we read recently that uh, taping an uncooked sausage to the steering wheel rim would be enough to fool the system's sensors into thinking that you are still holding on to it. Perhaps a little more development is needed there. Uh, the driver assistance pack also includes speed sign recognition and the parking assist with parking system plus auto parking feature that we mentioned earlier. Uh, staying with camera related driving options, you might also want to consider embellishing the headlights with a bit of extra tech uh, via the Matrix LED exterior lighting pack that we've been trying here, uh, which offers intelligently controlled anti-glare high beam light that reacts to light, road conditions and other motorists. Now, if you can't quite stretch to that, then there is the more affordable option of high beam assist. Now that simply uh, dips your lights for you at night. As for other extra cost driving orientated items, well, the key one is probably adaptive damper control. Now that lowers the car by 10 millimeters and it allows the suspension to be softened or firmed up based on your selections from the Audi Drive Select driving mode system. Now, if you have opted for this S-Line spec with its firmer springing, we think paying extra for that adaptive setup would probably be well worth considering. Even if you do really like a sporty feel, there are obviously times when you'll also want the option of being able to select a little bit of comfort. 
You might also want to consider a head-up display and there's an optional universal traffic recorder dash cam camera and that's available too. What about luxury niceties? Well, from S-line trim upwards, you can additionally pay extra for a panoramic glass roof and the extended ambient lighting pack, which can bathe the interior in your choice between 30 different colors. You're probably gonna want uh, the Audi phone box wireless charging mat uh, that can charge your handset and it can assist with call signal via the car's antenna. Uh, at the top of the range, you can specify advanced key keyless entry too. Uh, there is even an optional espresso mobile coffee maker, which fits into the cup holder and plugs into the 12 volt socket. On to aesthetics. Now, unless you want your A3 painted in solid brilliant black or Ibis white, you'll need to be paying your Audi Center more for your choice of paint color. Uh, beyond that, there are a range of metallic shades, including this pearl effect Daytona gray finish. And if you really don't care how much you spend on paint, well, there are various super expensive exclusive paint finishes available too. You might want a different wheel design. Uh, Sports spec offers 17 and 18 inch wheel options. S-Line trim has an alternative 18 inch rim style. Vorsprung and uh, S3 customers have 19 inch wheel rim options too. As for the inside, well, above entry level, you can specify a sportier flat bottom steering wheel. And the finishing touch might well be the addition of puddle lights that project the Audi rings or an S logo onto the ground when you open the front doors at night. The key practical option, which disappointingly Audi doesn't include as standard, is a space-saving spare wheel. Uh, you might also have expected that a wheel jack would be included, but no, that costs extra too. Uh, you're probably going to want the storage pack that we have here. Uh, that gives you a number of things which, well, in our view, really ought to be included as standard. Uh, seat back, storage nets, a lock for the glove box, uh, driver's side uh, storage compartment, a uh, 12 volt socket for the rear seat and for the boot too, uh, a luggage compartment light, uh, plus that storage pack also includes a boot storage net, you can also specify mud flaps, a USB adapter cable set, and all weather floor mats. And for the boot, a luggage compartment shell will protect the floor from soil and scuffs. Plus there's a luggage compartment tray for the carriage of soiled or wet items and a foldable luggage compartment box. Towers will want to add a trailer hitch onto which on request can be attached a bicycle carrier that can be specified to hold up to three cycles. Uh, for the roof, you can specify carriers for roof boxes, cycles, skis and snowboards. Enough with optional features, let's move on to look at safety. The amount of camera safety technology fitted to modern compact models these days is mind boggling, especially in this case. With all possible systems fitted, this A3 will feature a front radar with a 60 degree opening angle that can measure up to 160 meters from side to side, plus two rear radar sensors, each with a range of 70 meters, along with a front camera, 12 ultrasonic sensors and four surround view cameras. So what can all of this deliver? Well, let's dive in and tell you. You'd expect an up to the minute compact premium model to deliver an advanced autonomous braking system. And of course this A3 does. Audi calls its setup pre-sense front. Now this is one of those uh, setups that constantly scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. In this case, it works at up to 52 miles an hour and it can, if necessary, particularly pick out pedestrians and cyclists. If it does detect something that might cause a collision, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, then the system will automatically brake the car and it should be able to avoid an impact at speeds of under 19 miles an hour. If you are going faster than that, uh, then the pre-sense front system will reduce your speed to soften the impending impact. Uh, there is also a collision avoidance assistant that can help you with steering torque and braking to steer around a critical obstacle. And there's lane departure warning, and that will alert you if you drift over your lane delineating lines before applying uh, some light steering torque to ease the car back to where it ought to be. 
As for more common standard safety features, well, all versions of the car also get the Audi Connect safety and service package, uh, which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location should the airbags go off. Uh, you can also tick off Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, and a tyre pressure loss indicator. Uh, plus, there are twin front, side, and curtain airbags. In addition, uh, as expected in this segment, uh, there is a complete roster of electronic acronyms. Uh, that includes the usual electronic assistance for braking, for traction and stability control. Uh, there is also a rest recommendation feature and that will monitor your driving for drowsiness and it will alert you if necessary to stop for a restorative coffee. On uphill junctions, uh, you'll be glad of the hill hold assist feature, which will stop you from drifting backwards. It's always possible to go further though, and should you want extra peace of mind, then your Audi sales centre person will doubtless point you towards a further extra cost package, uh, which gives you three additional camera driven elements, a lane change assistant. Now that's basically a blind spot monitor that alerts you if you're just about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. Uh, an exit warning system. Uh, now that warns you if you're just about to open the door in front of oncoming traffic and rear cross traffic alert. Now that will warn you of oncoming vehicles if you're reversing out of a parking space. You can also pay extra for the front and side airbags with head bag system and that gives you front and side airbags integrated into the seat backrests and rear side airbags integrated into the side bolsters with a head airbag system. It's all very reassuring. Today's downsizing executive isn't short of opportunity to make an eco statement with electrification in various forms now common across cars in the C segment. Uh, you won't though necessarily find that option available now across the entire model range of the car that you want to look at, but it is very much in evidence here. Since most A3s are these days sold with mainstream petrol power plants and automatic transmission, it follows that most examples of this fourth generation Sportback will probably be sold in a form that is in some way electrified, which together with the optimum curb weight made possible by this car's light and stiff MQB platform ought to give this Audi a slight efficiency advantage over direct competitors that at the time of this A3's initial introduction uh, limited their most affordable mainstream engines to conventional combustion tech. That is pretty much how it turns out when you look at the WLTP rated stats. Uh, the A3 Sportback 35 TFSI manual gearbox model we're trying here, which does without electrified technology, manages up to 48.7 mpg and up to 132 grams per kilometer, aided by a redesigned stick shift, which is supposed to cut CO2 by up to five grams per kilometer. But this 35 TFSI variant, uh, the A3 range's best seller, will be at its most popular with the S-Tronic automatic transmission that's been paired with the brand's mild hybrid MHEV tech, in which form it manages up to 50.4 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 128 grams per kilometer of CO2. That is a chunk better than can be managed by base auto petrol versions of this car's two most direct rivals, the Mercedes A180, which returns up to 47.1 mpg and 135 grams per kilometer, and the BMW 118i, which can only manage up to 45.6 mpg and up to 140 grams per kilometer. And this Audi does have the advantage, denied to its A-Class and 1 Series rivals, of being available with a smaller super mini style petrol unit at the foot of the range, which promises even greater efficiency. Uh, the base 30 TFSI variant, which uses the three-cylinder, one-litre, 110 PS unit in question, uh, that offers up to 52.3 mpg on the combined cycle with the manual stick shift and up to 124 grams per kilometer of CO2. But when it's paired with the Estronic Auto and the MHEV Mild Hybrid Package, those stats can be enhanced quite a bit, up to as much as 55.4 mpg and 116 grams per kilometer. 
Those are diesel-like readings, quite literally actually. The Alternative 30 TDI 116 PS diesel version manages up to 65.7 mpg and up to 111 grams per kilometer in manual form or up to 62.8 mpg and up to 119 grams per kilometer in S-Tronic auto form. So why choose this car with diesel power? Well, Audi has sought to answer that question by installing into that 30 TDI model a larger and completely different two liter diesel engine using the VW Group's latest so-called twin dosing catalytic converter technology, which features dual AdBlue injection, significantly increasing emissions cleanliness. With twin dosing, AdBlue is injected upstream of two SCR catalytic converters, uh, which are arranged in series, with the result of considerably cutting emissions of nitrogen oxide. If you're still not completely convinced by that, and European governments certainly don't seem to be, then by all means limit your starting point uh, in perusal of the A3 range to that mild hybrid engineering that we just talked about. But do be sure that you know uh, exactly what you're getting with that MHEB tech, or more accurately perhaps, what you're not getting. Uh, as we have already remarked in our driving experience section, an A3 with this kind of light electrification isn't any kind of of Prius like full hybrid I mean it can never run independently on electric power alone instead the mild hybrid system is merely there to help recuperate energy add a little extra acceleration boost and to power the stop start system which is probably where you'll notice it most actually the start stop range begins at just under 14 miles an hour so you'll often find an MHEV powered 30 TFSI or 35 TFSI A3 coasting up to the end of a traffic queue, a traffic light or a level crossing. As with Ford's mild hybrid engines, this Volkswagen Group setup, which also features on rival Volkswagen Golfs, uh, Seat Lowndes and Skoda Octavias, is based around an integrated 48 volt BAS uh, belt alternator starter generator. This powers the 12 volt main electrical setup in which a 48 volt compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested by a KERS, Kinetic Energy Recovery System. If you'd prefer a full hybrid with proper all electric capability, then your Audi center will refer you to the A340 TFSIE plug-in variant we mentioned earlier. As you might know, if you ran an example of that variant's predecessor, the A3 e-tron, uh, plug-in models of this kind have a history of providing fairly feeble levels of all electric range. Uh, the 40 TFSIE, though, has a much bigger lithium-ion battery than the old e-tron model could offer, and the result is a far more useful usable 41 mile WLTP rated level of range. Uh, for lower spec variants at least, the larger 18 inch wheels of the S-Line trim drops that figure down to 37 miles. With 17 inch wheels, uh, the quoted WLTP stats for a 40 TFSI E model are a fantasy land combined cycle fuel figure of 282.5 miles per gallon and a CO2 reading of up to 31 grams per kilometre. That latter stat means a benefiting kind tax rating of just 6% or 10% if you specify S-Line trim with a larger 18-inch wheels. In comparison to a conventional 35 TFSI model, that'll cut your BIK tax payments by as much as 75%. At the time of this test in autumn 2020, that meant a £792 annual outlay for a typical taxpayer running a 40 TFSI e Sport model, as opposed to the £3,200 per year that he or she would have shelled out running the equivalent 35 TFSI Sport variant. Uh, do the maths and you'll find that meant a saving of almost £10,000 over four years for a 40% taxpayer. You can see the attraction. The downside with this fourth generation A3 evolved PHEV technology is that the extra cells inevitably take a bit longer to charge. Think four to five hours when you're using an AC wall box in your garage rated at 3.6 kilowatts or above. Because this plug-in variant's onboard charging capacity was from launch limited to just uh, 2.9 kilowatts, hooking the car up to the kind of 7 kilowatt garage wall box that you use for a full EV won't make this Audi charge any faster, but future model updates might change that. 
For completion, we'll also brief you on the returns of the S3 Quattro hot hatch model, 39.2 mpg on the combined cycle and a CO2 reading of up to 178 grams per kilometre. But if you regularly replicate anything like those kinds of figures, then you probably shouldn't have bought that shopping rocket derivative in the first place. And it really does deserve a better home. You know where we are. Helping the A3 Sportback stay competitive in efficiency terms are a whole series of careful design features. Uh, for example, there's a slippery CD factor of 0.28, making this one of the more aerodynamic models in the segment. This is something aided on the 30 TDI diesel variant by a controllable cool air inlet, a frame installed behind the radiator grille housing two blinds that close at low speeds and open at higher ones to improve air resistance. Uh, plus, as before, across the range, the S-Tronic Auto gearbox incorporates a freewheeling function which uh, disconnects the engine from the transmission uh, when you come off the throttle at a cruise. On MHEV mild hybrid models, the A3 Sportback can glide with its engine switched off like that for up to 40 seconds, which, according to Audi, will save you up to 0.4 litres of precious fuel every 62 miles. Plus, uh, also as before, the 35 TFSI model's 1.5 litre petrol power plant features cylinder deactivation that deactivates two of the engine's four cylinders, uh, the second and third, at mid to low throttle speeds. Whatever your A3 variant of choice, magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures that we've quoted can be rather difficult to achieve in day-to-day -day motoring, but then that's not an issue that's exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, hence the English that brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel do more when it comes to frugality. An efficiency assist segment of the uh, Center Dash infotainment screen there offers general economy tips. Uh, there is also an energy consumers readout, which is in the instrument cluster here, and that shows you the effect that, uh, say, the air conditioning is having on the car's energy usage. Beyond that, as usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the drive select vehicle dynamic system, which tweaks the air conditioning, uh, the gear shift timings, and the throttle response for maximum frugality. If you choose to use the individual drive select mode, which allows you to tailor your own preferred settings, you'll find that efficient is one of the three options that you can choose for the drive system. What else? Well, bear in mind that, as with all modern diesel cars, the TDI versions of this one use an AdBlue fuel additive stored in a separate rear tank, which will need to be topped up as part of regular servicing. Uh, talking of maintenance, uh, servicing your A3 should be no more taxing than is the case with one of the company's uh, smaller cars. As usual with Audi models, there is a choice of either a fixed or a flexible servicing regime. Uh, the choice between the two uh, does depend on the extent of your likely annual mileage. The fixed schedule is aimed at drivers covering fewer than 10,000 miles a year and it includes an oil change service every 9,000 miles or every year plus an inspection service every 19,000 miles or every two years. If you cover more than 10,000 miles a year then the flexible service schedule will be more appropriate. This regime includes oil change and inspection services at variable intervals of up to every 19,000 miles or every two years. Uh, Whichever package you go for, you'll have to change the brake fluid after the first three years and then every two years thereafter. Overall maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans which will be offered to you at initial point of purchase. Uh, they can cover you for up to a maximum of three years and they include an oil service and a major service. You may be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app, uh, as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance. That feature can, at the appropriate time, uh, send a service request directly to your local dealer. Uh, alternatively, you can, of course, sign up for Audi service request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable the car to communicate with the dealer. As your A3 nears a time when work will be needed, the diagnostics alert the nominated local Audi Centre, who will then contact you to book a convenient time. Another neat service your dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. 
Here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your A3 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera on specific problems and accompany the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can then be sent to your computer or to your smartphone. That way, you'll know exactly what work you're authorizing on your car. On to residuals, uh, the A3 has always performed well here and nothing has changed. According to industry experts CAP, a typical A335 TFSI S-Line petrol model uh, like this one would, after three years and 60,000 miles, still be worth 45.8% of its original value. Compare that to the 43.4% you'd get from a rival BMW 118i M Sport and the 38.2 figure you'll get from a Mercedes A200 AMG line. If you want 150 PS diesel power in your A3 Sportback and you choose the 35 TDI variant, you'll find that an S-Line version of that derivative will also retain 41.8% of its value over the same period, uh, better than an equivalent BMW 118D M Sport, 39.5%, or a Mercedes A200D AMG line, which is 36.3%. We'll finish by covering the warranty. Uh, all cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit the mileage in that period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend the cover to either four or five years and 75,000 or 95,000 miles respectively. As for insurance groupings, well, for the 30 TFSI variant, ratings start at Group 18E. For the 35 TFSI, ratings range between Group 23E and 27E. For the S3 Quattro, it's Group 34E. As for diesel power, well, for a base 30 TDI, ratings are Group 20E or 21E. For the 35 TDI, they range between Groups 24E and Groups 29E. In the search for a compact car that's also a premium purchase, there are probably more charismatic choices than the Audi A3, but we think there are a few better ones. Light in bulk, heavy in technology, it's a logical evolution of a breed that's long been one of Britain's favourite company cars. This improved version might look little different at first glance, but it'll feel so once you get to grips with the fresh, digitalised cockpit with its two sophisticated screens. Otherwise, things are much as before, which means that there's a lot to like. If you're one of those who still question the need for a premium people's hatch, then in this Audi, you have your answer. From the outside, it's as at home in Belgravia as it is in Brixton, but the interior is where the design really strides apart. You could be in a luxury car. Of course, in many ways, this is a luxury car, just a different kind of one. By pioneering the premium compact hatch segment with original versions of this model, Audi has, in many ways, redefined the meaning of automotive luxury, uh, democratizing it without the desirability being diluted. Other brands, of course, claim to have done the same thing, uh, and many have used a few more visual or dynamic fireworks to grab the attention. Ingolstadt, though, doesn't think that the A3 needs them, and legions of loyal global buyers seem to agree. Will they continue to make this car one of Audi's strongest sellers? Rival BMW 1 Series and Mercedes A-Class models certainly now run it close, and of course, other VW Group models in the segment offer the same engineering for a lot less but they don't deliver the same sheer pavement presence of an A3 Sportback. Ultimately, if you're attracted to this car, you're still likely to feel that there's nothing quite like this Audi. Cool, classless, and clever, it remains desirably definitive.